um apologize uh i have the technical problem uh, with my web uh, camera and uh, if i didn't solve this problem i'm going to uh, make the presentation without the uh, camera i do apologize for this technical uh, problem uh, i try to solve it but i didn't uh, reach thanks so much for your join uh, welcome to this class today we are going to talk about the political effect of the natural resources i think it will be very very interesting uh, topic for you for uh, your future uh, the essay as you know today according to the syllabus we should also start short essay i hope you will uh, also make your decision about the topic uh, in the end of our presentation, in the end of our class. And today, and, uh, sorry, uh, today I'm going to talk about the political context of the natural resources governance in order to understand how the natural resources are governed you have to political analysis at three different levels the international the national and the policy level we are not going to talk very much about the international level today uh, but if you open a newspaper you can see how important it is natural resources have impacted foreign policies, conflict, the global balance of power for the centers. We will spend most of our time talking about the national level, but this is within the given research rich country. I'm going to describe a few of ways that natural resources affect uh, politics. For the introduction, I would like to say that in the social science, an abundance of the natural resources is viewed in the most cases negatively, such as the strengthening authoritarian regime and the causing bad governance and the corruption. The substantial policy economy literature argues that the economic and the fiscal reliance on the natural resources helps create and monopolize authoritarian political system. The genesis of this idea is that oil revenues in research-rich countries constitute an external source of rents directly captured by the government, thereby rendering them an accountability to citizens. I share with you the Paul Kohler publication, The Political Economy of the Natural Resources. Uh, in this publication, the Paul Kohler, who is the one of the famous scholars and mostly focused on the African research countries, his publication also focuses on the political economy of the natural resources. But he argues that the political economy of the natural resources is about the interplay between politics and the valuable natural assets. The interplay is potentially in both directions. Politics can affect the exploration of the natural assets, and the natural assets can affect politics. In principle, Asa of this could explain the research course. Let me share with you and the 12 effect all of them coming from the different publication and they incorporated into academic studies some of them also my own printing is coming from my uh, own research 
there are different types of the political effects. As I said, incorporated into academic studies that deals with the management of the natural resources. In order to understand how the natural resources are governed, I will introduce some of the effects that natural resources base has on a particular country. I am going to share with you example from the different country experience. This is drawn on the political science literature about the natural research course. Now, of course, there is nothing deterministic about this effect. Some countries exhibit them and some countries don't. They also tend to be more prominent in countries where oil and the mining really is the only game in town. That's why it's very important your uh, intervention, uh, your also example. I am going to ask you, please give me some of your uh, experience, share the uh, experience of your country if you are uh, represent natural resource rich countries. Let's start first an effect of the centralization of power and the wealth. This is the first one. The wealth that often overshadows the entire rest of the economy flows into the central uh, government. Centralized power in rich natural resource countries, like it with the oil and the gas revenues, prevented the citizen from the exercising their civil their civil, political, economic, and the social rights. Authoritarian rule presented as advancing national interests created obstacle for the democracy building. Concentration of power around a single person enacted challenges on the democratic transition of research-rich countries of the post-Soviet region and other region of the world. Let me ask you, what is the situation in your country? In your country, there is the effect of the centralization of the power. In your country, the concentration of power around single person. If yes, how did it impact to the democratic transition? Could you share uh, some experience from your countries? For example, uh, now the, there is the representative of the different countries. Maybe Charlie, uh, you are in Timor Leste, yes? Yes, I, I think Timor Leste's situation is a little different than others um, because it only became independent. It became independent in 2002, and that was before the oil and gas was being exploited. People knew about it, but there wasn't any money coming in from it yet. And so when they established their constitutional democracy in, in 2002, 2003, um, they were aware of the problems that other uh, resource extraction dependent countries faced. And actually, I think dependency more than amount is the issue. It's not about being rich in natural resources. It's about, it's about being dependent on the money from the natural resources, the non-renewable resources. Uh, because countries like Canada, like Norway, like the United States, are very rich in natural resources, Australia, uh, and don't have these same kinds of problems. Um, but anyway, in Timor-Leste, they set up a legal system to try to prevent some of the problems that we've been talking about. And it was moderately successful uh, to this day. Uh, but the concentration of power and the single person kinds of issues have more to do with being from a post-revolutionary, newly independent state than I think from the natural resources. Because you'll see almost any country that comes out of centuries of foreign rule and, and a generation long war for independence takes some time before the, the uh, leaders of the independence movement are not the dominant political force because they're national heroes. And, and Timor-Leste is working its way through that phase of its history. Thank you so much. Thanks, very, very uh, good uh, point. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, if 
the country democratization process start before the discover of the oil and the gas uh, resources. Uh, it's uh, make very big uh, role. Uh, one of the uh, good example, uh, you know, the Norway. Uh, in the context of the transparency, accountability, and the good governance, uh, the Norway is one of the best examples. Uh, I agree with you with your point. Thanks so much for your sharing the experience of the Timorless. And uh, what about uh, the India? Uh, Saswati, could you share uh, your experience? Uh, and how did India uh, this? I know there is the different yeah. uh, station. It's not the same status uh, as other uh, the rich research countries, uh, but uh, now the, most of the rich research countries, the decision making power concentrated in the hands of a few individuals. Uh, yeah, uh, including my my country, Azerbaijan, as well. I am going to to give you also some example from uh, the, the experience of Azerbaijan. But for us, it's very very interesting. What, what about the uh, uh, the India? But I am not talking about the federal uh, level. Maybe in the uh, no. Uh, so so in India, the law actually mentions about uh, decentralization of power and wealth. But uh, it talks about, in fact, like mineral resources as shared inheritance and the state is just a trustee. But then the real picture is very different. Uh, it, I mean, if you go look at the implementation of it, then you see a lot of centralization of power and wealth rather than and it, it really takes away your uh, you know, economic, social and political rights of the citizens. And uh, even if the, the, the law says the power is uh, in the hands of the communities, uh, I mean, the, who are the uh, custodians of the natural resources. But uh, you see, the, the the government is actually they are like hands in glove with the uh, glo uh, with the corporates. And uh, because uh, if you look at the political economy, the corporates are the ones who are also kind of funding their uh, you know uh, elections and all that. So so it's, it's sort of you know there is definitely centralization of power and wealth in India, but. Uh, in paper, if you look at it, in, uh, in terms of legislation, it's definitely, I mean, we have a very strong legislation that way, but it really doesn't, uh, you know, in terms of implementation, it's totally poor. Uh, what about the rule of the law? And, uh, Sorry? You, yeah. mentioned, uh, uh, you mentioned the very strong uh, legislation. What about the rule of the law? What about the rule of the law? Uh, the court and the justice system, and now the India, uh, the heritage of the England the court system, it should be a fair and a free justice. Yeah. The court system. Yeah, I mean now, now we are uh, looking at if we just see the democratic spaces, it's shrinking very fast. We are like more into an authoritarian rule. Uh, and uh, we we are losing all of our resources. We there is absolutely no rationalization uh, of extractions that is happening all around in the country. So uh, it's like an open. I mean, there's uh, open uh, corporate corruption, and uh, the government is kind of totally. If you just look at the revenue transparency, that is totally nil. And uh, it's de definitely, and the, the dissent is totally, uh, you know, is like the dissenters are now being jailed. Like, even if you just, you know, say that these are the, the resources are shouldn't be, you know, taken away from us, then you are going to be put in jail. So it's very much, it's the uh, democratic space is fast uh, shrinking. Uh, thanks and, so much. Thanks yeah. for your additional contribution. And uh, is there any, Reflection, any uh, comments from other uh, participants? If not, let me go uh, forward because uh, we have the, also uh, a lot of floor for the discussion. I am going to share other, other uh, the effect of the natural resources. And let's see what is the second one. Second one, an effect is the rise of the politics of allocations. 
it means that the power is exercised through allocations. This is the crucial when it comes to policy making in the oil and the mining sector. Whoever is in charge of the research this day has a massive number of precious things that they get to allocate from the upstream license to the revenue themselves. So who gets that became the name of the game. This is the second effect and uh, second effect of the political effect of the natural resources. And now it's forward to the uh, next one. The effect of the discourage of the democracy. If you remember, I shared with you also one of the publications of Michael Ross. Michael Ross, uh, political science, the professor of the uh, California University, Berkeley. Uh, he also made extraordinary contribution uh, to the politics of the natural resources. One of his uh, found uh, that between the 1980 and 2006, all rich countries, oil rich countries, were three times less likely to democratize than non oil producing counterparts, according to the empirical studies of the Michael Ross between 1980 and 2006. His findings that oil providers an autocrat with the resources he can use to stay in the power and that level of the wealth can obscure at least temporarily incompetence within the state. A simple retrospective observation can yield the conclusion that resource abundant extraordinarily I dependence on the oil income as a detrimental effect of democracy. Venezuela and the Nigeria can be a good example of the how research richness can have zero sum relationship with the regime quality. Nevertheless, the case of the Norway poses a caution that initial status of the institution can make how future oil windfall affected regime. This is a very good point. Initial status of the institution. In Norway, the initial status of the institution was the democratic institution. But in most of the many research countries, uh, the democratic institution is still under the construction. And uh, in fact, it has been the documented that research field walls don't have a significant impact on institution in democracies. And in extreme autocracies, Saudi Arabia, but negatively affect the political equilibrium in the less autocratic countries, as in Nigeria. This is the, uh, coming from the uh, publication of uh, Michael uh, Ross. Uh, it's very, very uh, useful for us to explain the effect of the discourage of the democracy. In the many research countries, uh, the natural resources, and the rich oil and the gas resources, hindering uh, the transition to the democracy. This is the main problem to, to the transition of democracy. What about uh, other countries? Example, could you? Give me, could you share your experience? What about the Yokai uh, in your country? Can you open your uh, microphone and share your experience? And let me ask uh, Somaye, could you share uh, your experience? What's the democratic situation in your country? Uh, actually, based on uh... Uh, my experience, our experiences in Iran, uh, after a revolution, we should have a democracy, uh, but unfortunately, uh, we cannot see any uh, democratization in the process, and 
uh, we have election and uh, but uh, all of the power uh, you know our country is concentrated in the kind of just one person and uh, uh, we cannot uh, use uh, the uh, the power of parliament or uh, presidency uh, in our country well thank you so much thank you for your uh, for your uh, contribution and uh, Senor, what about the Turkey? Hi, uh, Turkey Hi. Uh, is not rich expect of oil or petrol uh, or yeah. gas actually, but we have some mines and uh, it became more and more uh, discussion subject of discussion because uh, government tried to open more minefields uh, and hydroelectric power station actually they are using the land on that way as a natural resource and we are getting more author authoritarian every day i can say that that's all i think well, I heard the uh, Turkey discover new uh, gas field. Is it true? They find some, but we we are not sure how much valuable it will be. How they how they can uh, extract? We don't know uh, for sure because we can't know anything for sure when this government says something. <laughs> All uh, process are closed and they are just talking about, but we are not sure about their re reality. They Thank found so some guests. That's true, but we don't know how much and how it will, when it will be extract and everything others. Let's see, let's see, let's follow the station. Uh, I think we will have the more information about the new discovered uh, gas. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, let's explain the, another effect, effect of the abuse of uh, power uh, and the corruption. Uh, I would like to share uh, one of the examples from uh, the experience of Azerbaijan, unfortunately. It's not good uh, experience. This is a bad experience. An ex example from Azerbaijan, the government of Azerbaijan allocated a license for a gold mine that was worth around 2.5 billion to the company of Imrock. This is the uh, international uh, the foreign company, but it's also uh, Azerbaijan international mining operation company call it uh, but originally registered in the UK a group of journalists started the digging into this transaction and they uncovered a number of level of different shell companies several of those companies were managed by the president daughters I mean the president of Azerbaijan daughters kind of the uh, intrusion by public sector official into the private sector causes major conflict of the interest because the one side the president signed uh, this production sharing agreement with the company another side uh, the daughter of the president also has share uh, in this company and uh, this case is a good example of why beneficial ownership transparency is so important. You know, the beneficial ownership, uh, this is the one of the uh, main initiative of the EITI, Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative. And uh, it's implemented, it will be implemented in the next year uh, and the, all of the member state of the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative should disclose information about the uh, beneficial ownership in the mining sector, in the extractive sector, in the oil and the gas sector. And uh, if 
the country disclose the information about the benefit, who is the benefit from this uh, contract, I think uh, it will be uh, also uh, very, very uh, important to see uh, who is inside of this, uh, who is the behind of this contract. But in, in our case, uh, uh, our uh, example shows that in, in my country, uh, behind of this contract, there's uh, the daughter of uh, the president, uh, the share of the daughter of the president, uh, the Leila Aliyeva and the Arja Aliyeva, there's the 11% of the gold contract. You know how much 11%? 11% of the contract value equals 275 million US dollars. And uh, I use this scheme that to illustrate how the daughters of the president of Azerbaijan involved to production sharing agreement between the government of Azerbaijan and the private sector. And uh, the company belongs to Leila and the Arja Aliyeva, the daughter of the president Aliyev, has been registered in the Panama. It's the offshore company. You can see here uh, the red one. The green one, this is the two company. As you see, the president of Azerbaijan, uh, Ilham Aliyev, here, and then daughters. And then they have a uh, share in the company, uh, Arclos Management Group, uh, registered in Panama. And they have also share in the company, also uh, Linden Management Group, registered in the Panama. They have shared the company. Also, uh, he think management SA registered in the Panama three company. You have the share and the company involved here, as you see, the 11 percent, uh, the share of the daughters of the president Aliyev. And uh, they register new company in the United Kingdom, the name of the company, Globox International LLP. And LLP also involved uh, this uh, production sharing agreement between the Azerbaijan uh, government uh, and uh, the uh, companies. From the government side, this contract uh, signed by the President Aliyev. From the company side, this contract uh, signed uh, the head of the company, which is also uh, belong to the daughter of the Ilham Aliyev. And you can see also another company. Maybe if we have the detailed information, it will be some companies inside the share of the total of President Ali. But, but the journalists only uh, they investigate this part of this contract and they found that 11% of uh, the whole uh, the production sharing uh, belong to the daughters of the President Ali. Let's go. Is, is there any, any other example in your country? I don't think so, because it's so, so uh, shining uh, example, uh, because the, some countries you cannot see uh, the open corruption as in Azerbaijan. In Azerbaijan, uh, it's not only contract the president family involved. President family involved a lot of the company, contract, a lot of the companies. And they involve uh, business activities, involve uh, production sharing agreement in the extractive industries. Okay, let's present the next uh, the rentier field. The last time, last time, uh, the professor Leila Aliyeva shared with you a lot of information about the rentier state, and uh, now you have uh, the basic information about the uh, rentier uh, state. You may have heard of term rentier state before because you are interested in this uh, topic. It was developed to describe the Arab countries during the oil boom in the 1970s. And it basically means that power is exercised through allocations. This is the uh, really crucial when it comes uh, to policy making in the oil and the mining sector. Whoever is in the charge of the research state has a huge number of the very valuable things that they get to allocate it. 
from upstream license uh, to the revenues themselves. So who gets what becomes the name of the game? Allocation, we talk about the right of the allocation, also tend to dominate the political uh, discourse, often the, to the detriment to other issues. Let me give you two examples of the uh, kind of the allocation I am talking about. Uh, one is quite populist, and other is more uh, predatory in nature. Mongolia has two main political parties. In 2008 election, a mining boom was on the horizon. And expectation around the future revenues was very high. One of the political parties during the campaign made a promise of allocating $700 share of the country's mining bills to its citizen. Exactly before before the uh, the election, the other party responded by promising to give one thousand cash transfer to its citizens. Two parties, one proposed the seven hundred, another the one thousand cash transfer uh, to each citizen. This was widely uh, an affordable promise. The amount would have the total 60% of the country's entire the GDP. Other example, let me give you uh, from the experience of the Congo Brazzaville. The national oil company in Congo Brazzaville gets to decide which companies can buy their oil. In 2005, it was, it was the company uh, that happened to be headed by the head of the national oil company itself. So they sold oil to so that shell company has deflated the prices. And then the company was able to flip that oil and the shell it at make price to another companies. The margin was shared by a group of the political elites who essentially had received an allocation of the public revenue through this fraudulent scheme. And uh, the two, two, two examples show that uh, the winter uh, effect also one of the detrimental uh, for the good governance in the country. State budget of the research these countries consists mostly oil revenue, not taxpayer money, or sales from the for-profit companies. This significantly reduces the level of the influence that people have on the government. Broad-based taxation requires building capable institutions that have the trust of the citizen. It's very important and the uh, participation of the citizen as a taxpayer. In this case, the, it's increasing also uh, the active role of citizen part participants. It also built the accountability because as a citizen, if I give money to the government, I am going to really want to know what they are doing with that money. But research this government, they are getting all this oil revenue or mining revenue, often don't bother to the tax their citizens. In my country, around the 60% of the state budget revenue coming from the oil sector and the oil fund as a direct transfer from the state oil fund to the state budget. But the role of the taxpayer is very, very low, but where I am in the United States, and now the, in Europe, the role of the taxpayer is so high. That's why the government also became more and more accountable. What about in your country? What's the role of the taxpayer? Is it high or less or, or uh, medium, moderate? And 
who is going to uh, share the experience of your countries? And uh, UK? Uh, could you explain your country uh, experience uh, about the what's the role of the taxpayers in your countries? Why well, in Burma? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, we had a military rule for more than thirty years until the two thousand ten, mm -hmm. and then. In 2010, we had an election, so it still mean the democracy of military control. And, and so, yeah, so recently, we have a some kind of the elected government on the property tax or income tax. Before, we didn't really have a accession system. Uh, there was military regime come from the natural resources so it says very very low accession and there's a low low demand from and the, how many percent of the revenue from extractive industry in this state budget do you have the any any uh, information uh, that's uh That's high, or unfortunately we lose your voice, Yokai. And uh, thanks so much. Uh, thanks so much for your uh, sharing your experience. Unfortunately, it's not good experience. Maybe uh, Charlie help us uh, to give positive uh, example from the Timor Leste. Yeah, I in, in Timor Leste, there's a sovereign wealth fund, and all of the money from extractive industries goes into the fund, and then money is taken out of the fund into the budget. So, the percentage depends on whether you consider the fund as part of the government or not. But if we just look at the state budget, about eighty percent of the state budget is financed with money from the petroleum fund. Um, but the petroleum fund money, part of it comes from investment and part of it comes from oil and gas revenues. And, and actually, in recent years, oil and gas revenues have dropped a lot because the, the fields are being used up. So it, it's money that was received for oil and gas production from oil and gas production seven, eight, ten years ago that's now being applied into the state budget. And, and the role of taxpayers is, is about uh, less than 20 percent of, of the state budget. But uh, the taxpayer is at how many population in Timor Leste? Uh, about 1.3 million. 1.3 million. Mm. But, but the taxpayer, uh, they are active uh, in the budget participatory process or not? Mm, not as taxpayers. As, as citizens, yes. People are very political. Uh, many people are involved in in electoral processes and political parties and civil society, um, partly because of the history of struggling for independence. Now people want to enjoy the, the fruits of independence. Uh, but in terms of the taxes, most of the taxes come from things like import duties and, and excise taxes. So there's very little that's that's paid actually by individuals. I see. Thanks so much, Charlie. Thanks again for your good contribution. Let's uh, share with you the experience from the three countries of the post-Soviet area, Azerbaijan, Russia, and Kazakhstan. As you see here, uh, the uh, blue one, uh, this is Azerbaijan, and the amber one, Russia, and the gray one, in the Kazakhstan. This is the individual income uh, tax. Uh, but uh, it's around the 10 percent, and the corporate income tax also around the 10 percent. It will that uh, in Azerbaijan, in Russia, in in, in the Kazakhstan, uh, the budget mostly formed uh, the rentier uh, revenue than uh, the income tax and the corporate tax. And uh, let's go to another effect uh, the an accountability effect. 
and this uh, accountability you know is often damaged uh, through co-optation resources each government have a huge amount of the money that they can use the quiet the media pay of the opposition or otherwise trying to get rid of the critical voice this is one of the main also uh, example coming from Azerbaijan. I am going to share it, but also I will welcome the uh, example from uh, other countries. But you have a lot of the research wells. You often tend to have the big accountability dynamic. Transparency makes it a little bit riskier for an official to abuse their power. Even if they don't get caught uh, today, they feel slightly nervous that because everyone knows what happened, someone may come after them in the future for what they have done. Two examples are coming from the Azerbaijan. First, President Aliyev shifted and uh, up to 500 three apartment for the journalist. Let me, this is the in, in uh, President Aliyev and uh, behind of the President Aliyev apartment for the journalist. Uh, it's free, uh, shifted to apartment. And this is the journalist. Uh, they made selfie with the President Aliyev. Uh, you know, uh, in return, the press council a high media organization, this is the head of the press council in Azerbaijan, awarded him to president of Azerbaijan. The title of the friend of the journalist is Sirs since 2013. And uh, can you imagine uh, this building financed by the oil fund of Azerbaijan? And uh, the revenue management is bad. Poor governance system, a lot of corruption, and the unaccountability problem. I am expert. I want to publish my views, my opinion, my research. But these guys, the journalists, should publish my uh, comment. If comment is critical in the negative comment, they are not going to publish because they want to have the apartment, free apartment. But not all of the journalists receive the three, three apartments because uh, it's finished the construction of the two buildings. Now the next building under the construction, other journalists, they want also to have the free apartment. In this case, no one is going to publish my critical views about the revenue management. What happened in this country? And citizen only received the information, the positive, because they are interested to publish the positive information because they need free apartment. And at the same time, also, President Ali became the friends of the journalists. But it's one of the uh, example uh, coming uh, from uh, Azerbaijan. And uh, I want also to add uh, some other uh, the information. It's the corruption perception index. Uh, most probably, uh, you know, it's very well in your country also uh, involved this uh, research as made by the Transparency International. As you see in Azerbaijan, uh, the share of the, uh, the score is very, very low, as it became low. This is the 2019, not 18. And Azerbaijan scored 25 out of the 100. This one is uh, the open budget index. And the Azerbaijan also uh, declared open budget index from the 51 to 34 after the construction of the <laughs> apartment for the journalists. Uh, yes, uh, the Charlie has a very, very good uh, comment. Do many people in Azerbaijan have access to the social media so that you could 
get your information out without uh, relying on journalists. Yes, uh, Charlie, we have the access to Facebook, uh, very popular in Azerbaijan. And uh, I am as expert, I publish all of my critical views, comments, opinion through the uh, Facebook. I have uh, more than uh, 30,000 followers and uh, also plus 5,000 uh, uh, friends. It means that I have also the certain audience uh, for the dissemination, my views, my comment. But the problem is that now, due to the war between Azerbaijan and the, the Armenia, most probably you heard about the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, uh, the access uh, to the internet restricted by the government. But my uh, post only accessible uh, the people who is out of the Azerbaijan. Azeri people who is living in Russia, in Turkey, in Europe, in United States, because inside of Azerbaijan, they restricted the internet. This is the one of the problem uh, for the dissemination of uh, our uh, position. Uh, but we are using very well uh, the YouTube channel. Uh, I am sharing my uh, views through the YouTube channel. We are using also uh, the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, one of the tools for the uh, spread uh, of our information among the interesting uh, the people. And the Saswati also uh, made comment in India, the mainstream media has been sold to the government. But the alternative and independent media is gaining transaction and the through that space again, and sorry, traction and the through that space again is getting the narrow. Thanks, Saswati, for your uh, good point. Let me also ask others, uh, what about the uh, what about the other countries? Uh, it's also very interesting uh, point. Uh, and uh, what about the Somali in your country? And uh, how uh, are you disseminate uh, your information? How they disseminate information by the expert? I, am, I mean the independent uh, expert. And uh, do many people in your country access to the social media? Is there any restriction of the internet or not? Could you expect? Uh, unfortunately. Yeah, please go ahead. Social uh, media and uh, it's scrutinized with the uh, government and uh, all of the uh, uh, some uh, application like uh, Twitter and uh, Telegram uh, uh, has been filtered and uh, we don't have access to this kind of uh, um, website and uh, no, there is uh, no uh, uh, there is no freedom. Uh, of a speech in our country and uh, everybody who uh, criticize uh, the government uh, uh, been uh, actually uh, suppressed and yeah, thanks uh, thanks uh, but it's not it's almost the same uh, station as uh, Azerbaijan and uh, I see the uh, senator also is typing. Uh, we'll have the. Uh, uh, let me also to read the uh, intention. The mainstream media is totally under control of the government. Social media is powerful, tall, and the government try to restrict. Could you open your microphone and share uh, what kind of the tools they are uh, using for the restrict of the social media uh, and uh, but in my country in Azerbaijan the independent newspaper blocked by the government you can't access the web page of the independent newspaper inside of Azerbaijan you can out of Azerbaijan for example mm -hmm. we have one of the independent uh, media Maidan TV and Maidan TV blocked inside of Azerbaijan but here in the United States I can access 
uh, Maidan TV publication. What about the situation uh, in the Turkey? Uh, since 2013, we are used to use VPN, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when something uh, is off-broad, we are using VPN most of the time. And they don't um, do that yet. They can't block uh, a site. They are closing one site or two accounts, but they, uh, the... Uh, um, opponent opens new ones so there is a big challenge uh, there uh, instead of media people are using what i are what i what they want to talk about actually uh, in turkey right now violence against women um, is in stage really horrible and there is almost every day a new news about a woman who was killed or something suffered from a man and we are just trying to get a justice through social media um i don't know if they couldn't yet get under control social media like they want not yet at least but they are trying <laughs> i can say it uh, they we have a law, uh, if you tweet against Recep Tayyip Erdogan, they can get arrest you because of you say bad things about him and you can get jail actually. There is a lot of people who, who is in jail about that. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of journalists who is in jail right now. Yeah, it's not okay, it's not good so. Yeah. It's not okay, uh, Senor. In Azerbaijan, also, we have the Facebook presence. You know, the uh, special uh, enforcement, uh, special service representative, they are also in a uh, social network. They are follow us. They are also uh, collect the information. Then, uh, if uh, we are in a country, uh, they invited uh, for the interrogation and the, they also opened the criminal case against uh, the uh, social active people but it's not criminal case uh, about uh, your uh, post it's criminal case about you uh, your uh, behavior uh, with the policeman and sometimes uh, they put the drug and also they claim that you are drug users Sometimes they put the gun, they also claim that you are uh, gun users, but uh, they open the criminal case. And uh, what about now? Uh, are you joined uh, through the VPN? And uh, or, or you have the free access to the internet right now? I have free access, but sometimes we are needed to uh, VPN, like if mm -hmm. something happens. I don't know when they uh, try to shut down internet recently, but they are, if something big happened in the country, they are trying. But they don't try to claim as drug dealer or user or anything else. They are just putting the terrorist label uh, to people and they are trying to claim like that openly. I see. <laughs> For your uh, additional uh, point, uh, it's very valuable. And the uh, Yokai from the Burma also shared uh, a comment. Uh, since 2010, uh, Burma's media station is better, and the majority of the people use Facebook, even for the political and the social movement. It's good. Good. I think the will come the time for Azerbaijan, for Turkey, for Iran and other countries also we will use uh, the free internet uh, also we will post uh, without any restriction our uh, political uh, views as well. And let's forward, let's forward because uh, we have also uh, some effects uh, and this is also one of the examples. I, I, I told you uh, I'm going to share two examples. This example also coming from Azerbaijan. The Azerbaijan Land, uh, Land, Land Roma, uh, this is the uh, name of the publication. This publication first time 
published by the uh, uh, by the Gu by the Guardian in the UK, and this publication shows a uh, 2.9 billion dollar Azeri government and uh, transfer uh, with the participation of the International Bank of Azerbaijan and the and the uh, Russian uh, government, uh, the defense industry also involved this process. They created the uh, different uh, the company in the UK, registered three company, also involved Danske Bank in Estonia. They spread, uh, they disseminate, uh, they distribute this money uh, among the European politicians. And uh, they paid uh, the European uh, political bribery. And as you see, this name of the companies in the UK company, four company involved for the laundromat and money uh, laundering. And uh, this is the they paid this money after the uh, laundering. The European politicians also uh, paid money for the luxuries, including the cars, uh, schools the interior uh, design and the dentistry dentistry it means that <laughs> even the journalists they get this information they published the deputy prime minister of azerbaijan uh, spent 600 <laughs> 600 thousand dollar for the uh, dentist for the change uh, his uh, tools in the most you know 600 thousand in dollar and uh, this is the one of the examples of the corruption uh, in Azerbaijan. Let's go to uh, another uh, example, uh, the lobbying effect. Uh, lobbying effect, also a uh, special uh, the effect coming from Azerbaijan. Maybe uh, there is also some element in your country. Uh, but now I want to focus mostly uh, in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan spent unprecedented resources on the lobbying. The Sunlight Foundation is located in the United States. Place Azerbaijan in the top 10 countries spending significant money on the service of the lobbying companies in the Washington DC. In 2015, uh, investigate journalists discovered that the Azerbaijani embassy in the United States pays hundreds of the thousands of the dollars of his main lobbying organization, the Podestra Group. And uh, 2.9 billion, I share with you, this is the uh, also publication of the uh, investigation journalist, uh, the Azerbaijani laundromat. And uh, it also shows that the shell companies by the Azerbaijan ruling edits, uh, they launder the money and then they pay uh, this money uh, for the elites, political elite of the European Un Union and the European Parliament and the Council of the uh, Europe, part of the sum, was used to harsh critics and to buy the loyalty of the Western organization. Can you imagine? They paid the European uh, politicians also uh, to uh, to close uh, their ease. Then uh, violation of the human rights uh, in Azerbaijan. No one uh, raised this question during the uh, Parliament Assembly discussion in Council of the Europe because they received the uh, bribery. And uh, let me uh, let me. Also, give you another example. It's not only an example. And uh, this is the three ambassador, former ambassador, US ambassador in Azerbaijan. You will you will shock, really. The former US ambassador to Azerbaijan, Stanley uh, Escudero, now serves as a private consultant to business looking to invest in Azerbaijan. Now, after the, his term, he stay in Azerbaijan. He prefer to stay in Azerbaijan. He prefer to open his private consult 
term for the looking uh, investment for Azerbaijan. It's also uh, one of the uh, example for the uh, lobbying effect of the natural resources. And another U.S. ambassador in Azerbaijan, Matthew Brasia, right now sits on the board of the Azerbaijan State Energy Company, State Oil Company of Azerbaijan, Sokar. He was the U.S. ambassador, you know. Could you imagine uh, he was the U.S. ambassador and uh, after the end his term, he stay in Azerbaijan. He is now uh, a member of the advisor board of the Azerbaijan State uh, Oil Company. Another uh, U.S. ambassador to Azerbaijan, Robert Secuta, right now serves as a member of the advisor board of the Caspian Policy Center, which was uh, also established by the government of Azerbaijan. This is the political from United States and uh, three U.S. ambassadors enjoy from the oil money in Azerbaijan. And she, she's the scholar, she's the professor. Maybe some of you heard about the Brenda Schaffer. Her publication also uh, about the natural resources, governance, and the politics of the uh, revenues, management. This is the official uh, the business card. Uh, Dr. Brenda Schaffer, advisor of the president of the SOCAR for the strategic affairs. She is now in the Georgetown University. And she published uh, the article, promote the government of Azerbaijan policy. Who will believe uh, this, is this article because she is rece she's re receiving the uh, salary from the state oil company of Azerbaijan. How she can be an independent scholar. And uh, if any, any information, any example about the lobbying effect in your country, I welcome uh, also to read here. Uh, also, I welcome uh, to uh, listen to you. The lobbying effect and abundance of the natural resources in poor democratic countries also find bilateral relationship of the local authorities with the Western government. Multinational cooperation that represent of the UK, US, and the EU continuously support status quo while turning a blind E to failures in the democratic reforms in the research rich countries. Local elites cooperate with the multinational companies, helping them to receive significant share in oil, gas, and other minerals production. Multinational enterprises in their turn provide economic incentive to keep the current political status quo. And what's the situation in the uh, Charlie in, in the Timorless? Is there any multinational company operate or not in the extractive industry? Yeah, in in Timorless, pretty much all of the extractive operations are done by multinational companies. Uh, Conical Phillips from the US, they just sold their interest to Santos from Australia. Uh, Japanese companies are also involved. There is a, a national oil company owned by the state of Timor Leste, but so far it's not producing anything and, it, and it's uh, potentially a, an avenue for corruption. But right now, the, the oil and gas is pretty much all controlled by foreign companies. No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, what about uh, other countries? Yeah, uh, also maybe Burma, Yokai. Is there any multinational cooperation uh, in the extractive industries of the Burma? Uh, sure, Guba, yes. Uh, almost, I think last year, slide was uh, the most 10, 10, 10 oil companies in the world. Around seven companies in Burma. So, uh, like what, the share total. 
What is the link between the political elites and the multinational corporation? And the multinational corporation involved the, uh, the political decision, discussion, or they operate only as a as a corporate, as a as a uh, companies. What, what was the situation? Is there any impact? It was, uh, uh, before it was, uh, yeah. Before it was uh, mainly chi companies from China, like CMPC, Petro China. So, yeah, they're big, big relationship with the Obama military regime and the China, China, China governments. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the also complaint about the Chinese companies, not uh, the transparency and the accountability. And uh, thank you so much for your uh, sharing uh, the experience from the Burma. It is called uh, another effect, the imitation effect. And uh, the imitation effect is primarily observed with the establishment of the pseudo democratic institution and by joining the international initiative. While we have the executive, legislative, and the judicial structures, Real power is concentrated in the executive branch in many research rich countries. This is the uh, very uh, the similar for the Azerbaijan. Then some initiative coming from the uh, international level, for example, EITI, Azerbaijan became the pilot country. In started the open government partnership, Azerbaijan uh, joined uh, one of the first uh, the country, the open government partnership. But what is the result now? Result is not good because the Azerbaijan uh, withdrew from the EITI in 2017. As I said uh, before, I was the member of the international board of the EITI. I was also uh, one of the uh, participants uh, of the decision about the Azerbaijan uh, suspension. Azerbaijan also downgrade the status, uh, as well as also Azerbaijan withdraw from the uh, EITI. But now, a member of the uh, status of the Open Government Partnership in Azerbaijan, this is the uh, inactive member of the Open Government Partnership. You know, Azerbaijan is the pilot country of the EITI, one of the five pilot countries, joined 2004 and withdraw 2017. Azerbaijan was one of the uh, first companies joined the Open Government Partnership in 2012, but in 2019, Azerbaijan became uh, the 18, became uh, the inactive member of the Open Government uh, Partnership. When Azerbaijan joined, Azerbaijan take a lot of obligation, commitment, but never comply uh, the commitments fully and uh, timely. That's why uh, some uh, organization made the decision about the status of Azerbaijan. It's not only the country Azerbaijan. This is difficult in the uh, in, in, in the uh, this uh, oh, okay uh, in this session uh, we received a message from the Saswati Svetlana apologize I have to leave now it is a bit late in India before the recording very sorry okay good luck uh, Saswati let's come uh, to come back to our presentation but to also uh, organization logo here Greco Venice Commission. Most probably you know the Greco. Greco, one of the organizations for the uh, the member of the Council of Europe. Uh, this is the recommendation made, the produced recommendation uh, for the anti-corruption activities. The Greco adopted the 12 recommendations from Azerbaijan. And 11 was implemented, but nine Never implemented. One of the uh, recommendations which was not implemented, uh, this is the publication declaration on assessed 
and the income of the civil servants. It's very important in the context of the anti-corruption in the countries like Azerbaijan, high corrupt country. But so far, no one uh, published the declaration. No one, I mean the civil servant, president, prime minister, MPs, and the prosecutors, judges, no one uh, published in this country uh, the declaration of the assets and the income. What about the situation in your country? In, in your country, and uh, is there any publication, any declaration about the income and assets or not? Was this station uh, in Turkey, Senor? I don't know, actually. If Probably there is, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, I never, uh, I never uh, see the uh, publication declaration of the income of the president of Turkey and the MPs of Turkey. Most probably uh, there is no uh, law. Maybe they have law, but it's not implemented. And uh, what about the Burma, uh, in your country, is there any publication of the declaration uh, of assets and the income in Burma? Uh, not very much uh, detail, I would say. Mm. I think, about, yeah, we don't, we don't. What about the child in, in the Timor race? Uh, do you know station or not? There, there are laws that require some of the very high highest officials to file declaration of assets with the court, the audit court, but they're not made public. And, and right now there's a proposal to have that law cover more people. And there's been discussion about that they should be made public, but they so far they haven't been and they, and they probably won't be. Uh, it's not public. They, they made declaration, but it's not public. Mm. What about uh, this Somaya uh, station in your country? Uh, I think there is uh, no access uh, to information about uh, how how much uh, uh, they uh, they have how much revenue they have from the natural resources and how they spend this uh, revenue. Thanks, all of you, for your sharing your experience. But, uh, you know, uh, a lot of imitation uh, from the research these countries. And uh, the other case that uh, characterizes imitation effect can be shown uh, defining the global commitments taken before the international organization by member countries involved. Uh, and that they uh, never uh, they impose and they never also uh, comply uh, the on time the commitment and the uh, obligation and there is uh, in Azerbaijan for example parliament but this parliament uh, member is not elected uh, the free and the paid uh, election and the uh, same time the judicial structures I mean the uh, the court also justice uh, power depend on the executive committee. In my country, all of other uh, the power depend on the executive branch. And uh, the real power is concentrated uh, by the uh, executive branch. It means the real power concentrated by the uh, by the president administration. This is the logo of the Venice Commission. Venice Commission also one of the institutions of the Council of Europe. It should make the uh, recommendation about the improvement of the election system. They made a lot of a recommendation for the Azerbaijan, but Azerbaijan never uh, the comply uh, the, the recommendation, never implement the recommendation. Let me draw your attention another effect, effect of the modernization. Why oil revenue using for the modernization by authoritarian regime. Reflecting attention away from the social problem and the democratic aspiration. This is the one. And the second is honest appropriation of oil revenues through overvalued investment project using the state budget expenditure. 
it's also one of the potential area for the corruption. If they spend more revenue, they made more money from the implementation of the huge project. So causing activities of autocratic rules and the masquerading their achievement before the international community. They want to show that we are also part of the modern uh, world. That's why they invest a lot of money for the construction, for the investment project. Uh, this is the ACO, one of the uh, really beautiful city. This one, the cultural center, also financed by the oil revenue. This is the uh, Haider Aliyev Cultural Center. Haider Aliyev, the father of the uh, current president of Azerbaijan, they invest 450 million dollars for the construction of uh, this, uh, this, this uh, the building. And uh, this is the uh, also uh, very popular uh, architecture involved for the construction of this building. And uh, let me uh, also give you information about uh, name who uh, involved as a designer. Okay, uh, let's draw your attention another uh, issue. This is the uh, Zaha Hadid. Maybe you heard about the Zaha Hadid architectures. Uh, this firm involved for the uh, design, this building, and the Zaha Hadid uh, made uh, design as a designer involved this process. But this is the Olympic Stadium. Azerbaijan hosted the European uh, Olympic Game. European in that time, Azerbaijan state oil company, Sokar, invest around the one billion dollar for the construction of the Olympic Stadium. This is the money coming from the oil. And this stadium used two, three, four, five times since 2015. But every month, every day, this stadium also required the maintain, uh, maintain uh, the expenses. This is a very, very uh, expensive investment. But there is no any commercial effect. This investment is not going to add value for the development of Azerbaijan. Only just design, just we have also Olympic Stadium for the uh, more than uh, 60,000 uh, people. This is the flag of Azerbaijan. Let me construct this flag. It was the highest flag in, in the uh, world. But it was only the uh, highest, only one week. After the one week, in the Tajikistan, in Dushanbe, they constructed the flag two more meters tall than Azerbaijan flag. We invest a lot of money also for the construction of the flag, uh, the square. This is the whole square invested money from the oil fund. This is Formula One in Azerbaijan inside of the uh, City, city name of the Baku, the capital city, also uh, constructed and they financed the oil money. Why? This is a modernization effect of the oil uh, revenue. It is see the, another example uh, coming from the uh, Russia. And the first uh, the picture shows the Moscow. Moscow, the capital city of the Russia. And the second one, uh, this is the Sochi. Sochi was hosted the 
Olympic Games in 2014. And the Sochi Olympics in 2014 were among the most expensive Olympic in the history. And much of the money that went to fund them was, of course, a revenue of the Russia. One of the reasons why they were so expensive was bloated the contracts, for instance. The Olympic Stadium was supposed to cost $49 million. It ended up costing 14 times that amount. $49 million it was the initial cost, the final cost was 14 times more than the initial cost. So why was the government so relaxed about the procurement? Why did not it cheap kind of the right there control of things? Again, the reason of political and the relatively obvious for the people in charge locating these illustrative, these lucrative contracts to powerful businessmen is a very easy way to kind of keep up the political lies the need. And for those of us who want to understand research rich countries, and particularly if we want to promote the good governance, you have to understand uh, this kind of the political dynamic. You can have the most beautiful design contract or saving funds, but if it runs counter to the political incentives of the day, it is very unlikely to be successful. And uh, however, uh, more optimistically, there are some ways to governance reform can alter the political incentives if you take the transparency, for example, transparency makes it a little bit more risky for an official to abuse their power. Even if they don't get caught today, they will be nervous, as I said there before, that because everyone knows what happened, someone may come after them in the future for what they have done. Let me go to another uh, country. This is the Kazakhstan. The city name was the Astana, now uh, renamed Nur Sultan. Nur Sultan, this is the first president of the Kazakhstan. Uh, after they resign, uh, they decide, parliament decide the change of the name of uh, the capital city of uh, Kazakhstan. And uh, you can see also is a different design the modern design. This is the two wells front office in the Kazakhstan. It's a gold uh, color. This is the uh, foam formed from the oil and the uh, other mineral uh, revenue. This one, the present administration. And uh, this one, the exhibition uh, center. I don't know what is that. Maybe some also uh, part of the exhibition center. And this is the view of the city of the Nur Sultan, Azerbaijan. And they invest uh, huge money. And before the capital of the Kazakhstan, capital city of the Kazakhstan, was, uh, was uh, the Almata, the president of Azerbaijan decided to transfer a capital city from Almata to the, to the uh, Astana, now the Nur Sultan. And because they can invest more money for the construction of the city. Here, uh, the comment come from the Charlie. Timurless is not auditorium, but this modernization effect is very real, especially airports and the highway that very few people will use. Thanks, uh, Charlie, for your uh, valuable uh, input. What about the other uh, countries? Uh, and uh, during the oil boom, the mineral booms, is there any effect of the modernization or not? What about the station uh, Burma, uh, UK? They invest more money for the uh, infrastructure? Uh, yes, uh, we 
we we we have i think the like 20 years ago bomb military regime they build a new a new capital city in the middle of uh, like the right zone in the, in the middle of the country and yeah it was very 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 beautiful the new capital city used uh, billions billions of dollars yeah um, yeah what, what what's what's the ranking of the corruption perception index in the burma is high or moderate or less uh well i don't know currently but before it was like the the after Haiti, there was a, the second was a, there was a 20 maybe it was uh yeah maybe around my yeah it's a very 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 high and why I am asking, because uh, from our experience, from the experience of the former Soviet Union, the construction was one of the potential corruption area. Because if you spend more money for the infrastructure, for the construction of the road, hospital, and the uh, schools, and this uh, building, uh, you can make more, uh, you can stole uh, more uh, money uh, because uh, this is a very uh, favorable environment for the corruption this is the potential corruption area the construction sector it is it, it, it was in in, in the soviet uh, former soviet uh, union let me uh, also share some uh, figures with you from uh, the kazakhstan russia and Azerbaijan. Uh, you can see how many percent of the government expenditure on investment from the state budget. Uh, for example, it's more time uh, in the Azur Kazakhstan, 31, 27, 29, 28, uh, 34, it's more than uh, 30%. And the Russia, a little bit less, but Azerbaijan, sometimes is, <laughs> even in 2008, more than 40% of the budget spent for the construction by because the construction potential area for the corruption and uh, here also the additional information is only covered on the Azerbaijan uh, the percentage uh, of the state budget expenditure uh, in the let me move the another effect of the reparations but maybe uh, there is no uh, the same station in other uh, research these countries but there are many research these countries rental revenues is used to boost law enforcement uh, in titles autocratic regime and state vital treats from the opposing forces and inept program to eliminate moderate opposition parties independent media outlets and the civil society as well in my country in Azerbaijan the authoritarian countries, authoritarian government first targeted the political organization, then mass media, and the last uh, they targeted the civil society, independent civil society, the free media, not all of the media, they have media, media under the control of the government, but they don't need the independent media and the independent civil society organization. Research this dictatorial regime's government utilize manipulation and the repressive tactic to Azer by the support of their opponents. Impose illegal fines or detain people on trumpet of charges. I already shared with you what kind of the uh, Trump of charges. This is the user of the drugs, user of the guns. This is the also uh, behavior uh, in your behavior with the policemen uh, they can uh, raise uh, the criminal case against the opponents against the opponent and uh, let me share also draw your attention the uh, some figures from the Azerbaijan Russia Kazakhstan uh, Russia spend a lot of money for the law enforcement and the special service you can see here and the second place, the Azerbaijan and the uh, Kazakhstan spent money based on Russia and Azerbaijan. And here, you can see 
how the militarization of the uh, social unrest and the demonstration uh, it first happened in Azerbaijan, in Baku. Three policemen. This is the woman. And here you can see how they uh, close the mouth of the uh, protest, Protestants. And three uh, also uh, against Ban. Here, how they want to uh, neutralize uh, the person who goes inside <coughs> this uh, process and uh, this is the journalist because uh, journalists uh, uniform they also uh, they uh, also want to neutralize the journalist's participation in the demonstration let's see the, another uh, photos coming from the russia you can see almost the same approach one lady one, two, three, four, five policemen against one lady. And the same approach, three also want to neutralize one young uh, people. Here also lady around the how many policemen. Lady, how many policemen? They want to neutralize the <coughs> protest in the Moscow. And let's see in Kazakhstan, you see, it shows, uh, it means that it happened only one country, not three different countries. Why? Because they use the same tools, they use the same tools for the repression. And in Kazakhstan, uh, there is no lot of the policemen, but the same approach, behavior. And uh, there is no, no, no uh, democracy no space for the uh, freedom of express freedom of assembly what about the other countries uh, the government are using uh, the oil money for the boost of uh, the enforcement law enforcement in titles and and uh, and your uh, regime, uh, they paid, uh, they are buying uh, the opponents. I, I know the station in Turkey, station in Turkey, almost the same is station in Azerbaijan. And uh, I know the station in Iran, also uh, almost the same as the Azerbaijan. This is the neighboring countries. And uh, what about the Charlie in timor uh, is there any uh, space, civic space, and the, any political space for the uh, freedom of assembly? And, and yeah, it's it's certainly freer than the, the countries that you've been talking about. There are some restrictions, and there have been a few cases of assassinations of, of political dissidents, but in, in the last ten years, less so. Uh, and the police sometimes arrest demonstrators, but uh, often not. They're, it's much freer than than, than Azerbaijan or, or Russia. Thank you, thank you. Any anyone is want to share uh, experience? In your countries. Okay, uh, okay, it's enough. Uh, we have the bad example from Azerbaijan, Russia, Kazakhstan, and the good example from the Timur Leste. And uh, let's go to the end of the presentation. Uh, one of the effects of the over militarization effect. And this is the uh, military, uh, this is the military expenses uh, annually. And this is the transfer or review from the state budget uh, to the uh, to, from the oil uh, state oil fund to the state budget as you see here uh, this went up and the same also uh, the military expenses uh, also uh, went up there is the uh, direct link between the military expenses and the uh, transfer 
from the state oil fund to the transfer uh, to the to the state budget. The information how many spent uh, the military expenditure in Azerbaijan from the state budget, and the uh, the share of the military expenditure of the GDP is very high. Sometimes it's around the five percent, but now three point five percent is in two thousand eighteen. The last, uh, this is the effect of the domestic conflict. In some countries, uh, research uh, seems to exacerbate conflict. In other cases, it seems to bring about the more stability in terms of you now the exacerbating, conflicting rebel movements can use resources to find to fund their operation, especially those resources are both known as a table, meaning you can easily take them from one place to another and exchange them for cash. So resources can motivate some kind of the government takeover, like a co-op or lead group to try to extort the government. You know, treating them to say, Unless we receive the bigger share of the pie, we are going to cause instability. For a number of the authoritarian regime, natural resources seems to have contributed to their stability as well. So that impacted a little bit less clear. So these are some of the ways that natural resources impact the political system. For example, in the Nigeria, now what happened in Nigeria? Nigeria, uh, in the end of the 1980s, Nigeria, you know, the federal government, uh, each state, they want to receive more or revenue from the federal government. And uh, it was fighting for the revenue, when they distribute revenue by the uh, government. And in Nigeria, two states decide at the same time, constructed steel company. They invest around the seven, eight billion dollar for the construction. But the initial, but the initial, uh, the calculation initial uh, cost was uh, two, three billion dollar. It was the overestimation, and it was the corruption. And now, 10-15% of the uh, steel company operated. And 85-90% uh, they are not using the uh, steel company because it, it was, uh, how to say, uh, uncommercial also project, but they invest a lot of money uh, from the state budget. This is the Freedom House report uh, over on the Azerbaijan, Russia, Kazakhstan, and uh, you know the all three countries not very status, and almost the same uh, the GDP per capita in Russia and Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan less than Kazakhstan and Russia, but uh, the Azerbaijan score is less than Russia. Less Russian score less than in the uh, Kazakhstan. It also shows that uh, there is a direct link between the oil and the gas and the mineral resources and uh, democratic station. The oil hindering transition to the democracy in the former Soviet Union countries like Azerbaijan, Russia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan as well. Azerbaijan has substantial oil resources, but they will be short-lived. But uh, three years of revenue management in my country, one of them the sustainability, overspending, we spend a lot of money, it was prosecutory spending uh, trend. When uh, they, we receive the more uh, revenue, we spend more money. When we receive the less revenue due to the drop of the oil price, uh, we spent the less money. And uh, unfair distribution of the revenues. 
Volatility is very, very high. Poor spending, corruption is high. Shadai economy is high. Lack of the transparency and the accountability, one of the main problems. And the lack of the public confidence as well. Public participation also is very weak in, in the budget process, in the oil distribution process. This is the information uh, about the rentier state, Azerbaijan as a rentier state. From the 2013 and 2018, total proceeds from oil production accounted for 65.3% of the state budget revenues. Crude oil made 86% and the oil products made 6%. So oil and the oil products made 92% of the Azerbaijan export. Could you imagine when the oil price dropped, what happened in country? Because the country depends on the oil export earnings. Country depend on the oil revenues, and the budget depend. The GDP formed 47% in the oil and the gas sector. And uh, let me also uh, respond to some questions. It's very important in the context of the revenue management. Budget volatility. Yes, it mostly depends on oil revenues significantly oil price. Macroeconomic volatility, a huge share of the oil sector leads higher volatility. Plus disease, the symptoms of the disease cause exchange rate, substation of the technology and movement of resources are observed. I'm going to talk about the dust disease. I'm going to give you the detail, the information. Uh, what's the symptoms of the dust disease? What does it means the cause effect, exchange rate effect, substitution of the technology and the movement of the resources effects. Intergeneration equity, permanent income structure is not followed. Therefore, most of the resources spent now, according to the official statistic, uh, more than 75% of the accumulated revenue already spent. Public debit, 90% of the GDP, use of oil for the mineral revenues for the development, apparently yes, because I show some uh, infrastructure and I show you also some construction in the, uh, when I uh, explain the modernization effect. What I want to say in the end of our uh, today's uh, presentation, I want to say that this national level dynamic are crucial to understanding individual policy decision along the decision chain from the allocating license to the spending research, resource revenues. And in the end, let me give you two additional examples of how the national level dynamic impact the individual policy choice. The first come from the Nigeria. There is the chronic problem of the confusion and debate around how much money should the national oil company transfer to the treasure. This has been the problem for years and it is gone and fixed it for years. So you wonder, you know, what is going on here? What is the reason why this very expensive and the kind of the persistent problem has been allowed to remain in place? And the answer is in the political environment of the Nigeria. The leaders' horizons are very short. And for those in power, they have to devote a lot of research and energy to managing what is a large competitive and the kind of the Rapakis elite. So for them, having the national company over which they have uh, 
discretionary control, which can be used for the patronage purpose, is quite valuable and the outweighs the objective. Outweighs uh, the objective of having you have a high functioning national oil company that would produce greater returns for the nation in the long term. Another example I already uh, shared with you uh, from the Russia uh, and the uh, Sochi experience shows that uh, the government want to spend more money because they want to stole money through the corruption. You know, uh, the countries like uh, Azerbaijan, Russia, Kazakhstan, and other uh, authoritarian countries uh, only way uh, to increase the transparency. Because the transparency makes it a little bit more risky for the officials to abuse their power. And uh, transparency also depends on the public participation, depends on the uh, free media, and they depend on the independent uh, civil society operation, civic space. That's why uh, what we need, what we need, we need the good governance, we need the transparency, we need the better oversight, we need the stronger rules, we need the independent justice and the court system. And it means that, uh, first of all, we need democratization because without the democratization, you cannot establish those uh, democratic institutions. Thanks for your attention and thanks uh, for your passion. And uh, I hope, I hope uh, we will also. Uh, have time to back uh, to the different effects of the political effect of the natural resources. And the, uh, Charlie shared also one of the uh, good point, the big problem in the timor lease where the oil is also running out, is that most decision makers cannot imagine an economy without oil money. I don't take steps to prepare for it, such as the investing in education or agriculture or funding aids to replace import. Will you discuss this in another class? Yes, of course, Charlie, we will discuss. We will discuss. Uh, definitely, we will uh, respond to your uh, question. But let me, in the end of our presentation, in the end of our class, uh, discuss with you uh, shortly uh, our short essay and uh, it will be better you also uh, start uh, to write one of the uh, short essay on the base of the political effect of the natural resources maybe uh, you can also focus on the one of the uh, Political effects today I shared with you and the previous class, uh, Professor Aliyeva shared with you about the rentier state. And uh, it will be better if you uh, send us the name of your short essay. And uh, you can also submit your short essay. For example, today you share uh, your experience. And, uh, you can choose one of the political effect and send us uh, the short essay. I'm not going to give you some framework, but up to you. It will be better if it is uh, up to uh, page, uh, up to three page, and the 1.5 double, uh, 1.5 uh, double double space or 1.5. It also. Uh, we will be the 1.5 uh, and the three pages, up three pages, 1.5 space. 
could you uh, prepare your uh, short essay also submit uh, during the uh, next class uh, feel free to choose uh, any topics so far uh, you learn from other presentation from the presentation of the uh, professor Aliba and my presentation uh, what do you think? Dear, dear Gubat, sorry, may I also um, remind you, is it possible for you to send a message to everyone from platform to remind them to choose their short essay topics and they will they can also answer you by message? Is it possible? Yes, okay. Uh, 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 you mean now in the chat book or? Uh, uh, no, in the from the platform to message to platform. everyone. Okay. Yeah. okay, I will do uh, definitely. Thank you. And maybe everyone can answer you, and they can choose their topics. I okay. Uh, but now I want to uh, receive feedback if they have any feedback about the short uh, essay. If they have any question uh, for the clarification. Uh, please ask. Uh, we have the uh, six more uh, minutes. Left the six minutes. Uh, you can also uh, uh, ask uh, any question regarding the today's presentation. Any reflection? Welcome. Any comments? Any intervention in the end of the class? Any feedback? Okay, guys, thank you. Thank you one more time. Azal, uh, do you want to say something uh, for the future? And the next time it will be, I think, uh, it will be the same uh, time uh, area because the United States is, is going to change. Yes, yes, next week it's going to be same time zone. So nine in EC, EC, ESD. ECT, yeah, EST and uh, 3 p.m. in Central European time. Uh, in the end of class, I want uh, one more time uh, I do apologize uh, for the uh, problem of the webcam. I hope I will uh, solve this problem uh, before the next class. This is a problem related most probably the technical issues. So I don't know what happened, but I, I, I definitely will solve this problem. Uh, I will be happy to see all of you in the next class. I'm also going to join the next class when the professor Leila Aliyeva uh, will uh, moderate, facilitate in the next class. Thank you so much. That's all I want to say today. I hope uh, you will receive uh, more information from the experience of the different countries, also the effects, political effects of the natural resources. I will send you uh, 